For the past year, Google has been teasing its Project Glass, a pair of glasses that let you see uh, digital information in the real world over your line of sight. Now, finally, the first editions of Google Glass are beginning to roll out to developers. And it's an interesting experience having a small screen right above your line of sight on your face all the time. And a lot of people who haven't had the opportunity to try out Google Glass are wondering, you know, how does this thing work? And, you know, I have a lot of questions about Google Glass. Well, I'm here to tell you today about everything that you've wanted to know about Google Glass. First, let's talk about how they work. The glasses, Google Glass, as you can clearly see, are not like your typical spectacles. Inside the right arm are the parts of a smartphone, a processor, 16 gigabytes of storage, a Bluetooth radio, a small battery, and more. On the front, you have the star of the show, a small little glass square. That's the screen, and when you put the glasses on, you can adjust them so it sits slightly above the top of your right eye. If worn right, it really doesn't obscure your line of vision. And yeah, people don't walk into walls when wearing Google Glass. If Google employees have specifically said it does not obscure your line of sight, and even though Virginia lawmakers are see seeking to ban Google Glass from driving, uh, it's not as much of a safety issue as, say, t checking your smartphone while driving. Now, the glasses pair with your Android smartphone, not iOS yet, to get connectivity, and using the My Glass app, you can configure the connection. iPhone support is coming, though Google hasn't put a time frame on when. You pair them with your phone via Bluetooth, and if you have Bluetooth tethering, you can use your phone's 3G or 4G connection. If you don't, you can connect both the glass and the phone to Wi-Fi. Without connectivity, though, you can still take photos and videos and things like that. That. Now, you do need it to be linked to your phone if you plan to use Google Glass for navigating on the roads, though. It won't be, it doesn't pick up wireless data signals, and that's kind of a big issue, and a lot of people are wondering about that. Now, to the right of the glass screen that I've already mentioned, there's a 5 megapixel camera and there's a button on the top of the glasses for taking photos. You can also take a photo by just simply telling Glass to take a photo. Now, as far as control goes, Google recently released a video on how to control Google Glass. It's fairly simple. There's a touchpad on the glasses that you can swipe on and tap on to view different slides in the timeline view. It's a little, it's complicated when I say it, but when you actually see it in action, it's actually quite easy. Now, Another big question that people were asking is, what can you do with a pair of Google Glasses? I mean, what can it do besides maybe be a camera, be a navigation device? And you know, the honest answer right now is not much. Not many developers have released apps yet for Google Glass, and when, but, but when it does roll out to you know, consumers next year, probably a lot more developers will have gotten a chance to create apps. This, this won't really be useful until you know, it gets some big apps like you know like Facebook and Twitter and it can, right now you can't even check stock prices without going into Google and searching so you know it will only it'll come into its own when there are more apps for it and you know it, for a developer you there you could create a lot of interesting games with a pair of connected glasses like Google Glass now, the things you can do on Google Glass right now are you can take photos and video, you can get notifications and emails, and you can use Google stuff. You, but you can't simply look at something and have them search, and it's all voice activated, or you use the touchpad. Now, now you're probably wondering about the price for Google Glass as well. Well, currently the price for developers is fifteen hundred dollars that's right that's one thousand five hundred dollars now thankfully this probably will not be the price when it rolls out to consumers next year it'll probably have a dramatic price cut right now the additions are quite expensive because google is just testing them and it's just trying to get some feedback and they're not for everyone but you know, we're, we're, right now the price is kind of ridiculously expensive, so it'll need to get a lot cheaper if Google actually wants to start selling the glasses. Now, Google, you might, one more thing that people are wondering is, you know, does Google Glass make you, you know, kind of like a cyborg? Does it really 
makes, I mean, does it look really weird to have a computer on your face? And the answer is probably no. I mean, sure, it's going to be slightly unusual if you're walking around with Google Glasses on your face, and people will probably comment on it. But, you know, aside from the initial, you know, that's cool response, people aren't going to keep on bringing it up because it's not that noticeable. Even when the glass is turned on, all the people looking at you can see is just a small reverse image of the image you're seeing. It's big for you, it's small for them, and they can't really read it. They can probably tell when you're taking video or photos of them, which is good from a privacy standpoint. But you know, it's 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 not gonna be it's not a really big deal. You, no one's gonna care if you're really wearing Google Glass. Now, the most annoying thing about Google Glass is the connectivity. It, right now, the connectivity is slightly glitchy, and you know, without a connection, there's not much you can do besides take photos and videos. And you know, you can just use your smartphone for that. If Google improves the connectivity slightly and makes it more reliable, more people will enjoy Google Glass more because a lot of it depends on you know web searching, and you can look at plane flights, you can look at weather, you can look at you know all that kind of stuff. But you need an internet connection to do it. If you pair it with your smartphone, you can use 3G or 4G, but again, that's slightly glitchy right now. Now, that's about it for uh, what I'm about to say about Google Glass. Um, the one last question I, I probably I, I need to quickly answer is about privacy. A lot of people are wondering, you know, uh, Google Glass, it seems to really invade privacy. I mean, you won't be able to tell if someone's taking a video of you, and that's a little bit unnerving. I mean, I have friends who would be more than happy to take advantage of this, and that wouldn't be great. But the good news is, is that there, there's going to, Google Glass is probably going to cause, you know, some regulations to be developed about, you know, when it's appropriate to use Glass and when it isn't. And then also, uh, Google Glass isn't that, I mean, you can see kind of if someone's actually taking a video with you of Google Glass. I mean, Google Glass isn't that much more secretive than if someone was just spying on you and taking a video of you secretly with their smartphone. I mean, it's not really that different. Now, uh, you might have heard that there's at least one Seattle bar that's already banning Google Glass due to privacy concerns. But I, I mean, I, I don't think it'll be too much of a problem for the average user. I think a much bigger problem right now is just, you know, the lack of apps for Google Glass and just, you know, the lack of usefulness right now. Uh, privacy is an issue, but I think over time, you know, people will get used to, you know, when it's when it's good to use Google Glass and when it's not okay to use Google Glass. I mean, it's just basically okay to use Google Glass in all the situations when a camera would be okay to use or your smartphone. And people should respect those rules. So, but that's about it for my, for this little discussion about Google Glass. I hope that's cleared up a lot of your questions about the device. It's actually quite a neat device when you look at it. And I would, and I can't wait to see it in action on consume, when, with consumers when they get their hands on it around next year in 2014. For now, the lucky few who have tried it, congratulations. We here at CTN have not actually officially received a copy, so we haven't actually used the device yet. But we've heard a lot from people who have actually used the device. And, you know, initial impressions have been fairly good. But tell us what you think of Google Glass in the comments below. And, you know, do, do you like the device? Do you think it's a cool device? Do you or do you not like Google Glass? Do you think it's gonna? Do you think it's just not that useful? Or do you think the price is too high? Or do you think it's gonna affect privacy too much? Let us know your opinions in the comments below. And with that said, thanks for watching, and see you next time.